I test drove the UK Model Y this week, so I thought I'd share my experience with you in case you're thinking of doing the same. And even though I'm used to my Model 3, the Model Y still threw up some surprises for me. So first of all, what's the booking process like? Well, for me as a Tesla owner, it was really simple because Tesla just emailed me to tell me the dates. Now, unfortunately, my emails went to my junk folder, which I need to change because unlike a lot of companies, Tesla don't email you irrelevant rubbish. It's all good stuff. So if you are on their mailing list, make sure you change that over because I missed the London and Manchester dates because it had gone to the wrong folder and I was too slow to book it. Thankfully, Tesla emailed me again to say more dates had opened up all over the country with loads more appointments. Would I like one? Of course, yes. So I filled out the form. I had a date, location and time. Job done. Easy as that. They don't give you a huge amount of information once you've booked it, but I booked it two weeks in advance. That comes the day before the event. One thing I would say is when you're booking it, be careful because the drop down menu doesn't always default to the model that you're expecting. So make sure you book the right Tesla for your test drive. I knew where I was going anyway, but the day or so before you'll get an email from Tesla to confirm the details and also loads of links as to how to drive the Model Y. So you can learn that before you get there so you're not spending your time on your test drive learning the controls and can just get out there and enjoy it. It's pretty standard stuff they send you. It's like arrive 15 minutes before, bring your driving license and you can bring up to three friends, which I thought was pretty decent in these COVID times. A Tesla rep also rang me to confirm my attendance and it enabled me to clarify a few things over the phone. He also then sent me a link so I could send my driving license in advance by filling out a form and sending pictures of it. So that made it a lot less hassle once I arrived at Tesla. So far, so good. Hassle free, very easy. And most importantly for me, no massive hard sales pitch at any point during the process, which I like as a customer. The day of the test drive was easy enough as well. I live about an hour away, so I allowed plenty of time. Got there 20 minutes beforehand to see lots of Model Ys buzzing around the car park going in and out. So it was starting to get exciting now. If you haven't been to a Tesla showroom before, don't expect loads and loads of Teslas indoors. Most of them will only have one model on display. The one nearest me in Milton Keynes, I've only ever seen a Model 3 in there. Similarly, even though Birmingham was bigger, it still only had one Model 3 on display. The rest of the Teslas are all outside and you can kind of have a look around them out there. As you arrive, you'll be greeted by the check-in desk where there's some iPads where you have to type in your details, confirm your appointment. The chat will then show you some lovely comfy chairs and make you a delightful coffee whilst you wait for your Model Y to return from his previous test drive. Once he knew I was a Model 3 owner, he skipped all the how to drive it part and pretty much just handed me the key or the card or whatever you want to call it. And then we walked out to see the Model Y I was driving. There were some customers from the previous test drive already looking around it. So he pointed out the key differences between the Model 3 and the Model Y, which is quite useful. After that, he asked if I knew the area, which I didn't, so he put in a little route for me on the sat-nav, and then I was free to go. He said, come back in 20 minutes. As I said, no one came with us, which surprised us, and although he said 20 minutes, he actually said, come back by half past, so I figure as long as you're back by the time the next appointment starts, they're pretty relaxed about it. The process of receiving the email to book the test drive to get in behind the wheel of the Model Y was so easy. It was ridiculous. It was seamless. So what about the test drive itself and what were the surprises the Model Y had in store for me? Well, the first surprise shouldn't have probably been a surprise when I come to think about it, but it was how similar they are inside. So if you're new to Tesla and you've never experienced a Model Y or you can't get to see one, then you can only see a Model 3. It's a great start because they're pretty much identical. I'll come on to the key differences in a second. And as I said, that shouldn't have been a surprise to me because I know the Model Y is made up of two thirds of the parts of the Model 3 to save on costs and efficiencies. So as a Model 3 owner, the wow factor was lost on me a little bit because I'm so used to my Model 3. The second surprise, which again, shouldn't have really been a surprise, was how much it felt like an SUV. I know it's being marketed as an SUV, but from the pictures, I thought I'd be driving like a Model 3 with a bit bigger roof. That was it. The bits I noticed when I got in was you're not in this laid back driving style that you are in the Model 3. You're a bit more upright with your legs at more of a right angle. So for anyone that wants a car that's easy to get into, the Model Y is going to be for you because it's not something you have to climb up into, but equally not something you sink into that you're going to have to pull yourself out of. The ride height is also noticeably different, not as high as a Range Rover, but you're definitely sitting above the saloon cars that are on the road. I've always found driving a slightly higher vehicle is less stressful in traffic because you've just got better visibility. So that's going to be a huge bonus for Model Y owners. I know it is an SUV, but 
from the pictures, I was expecting a Model 3 with just a bit more headroom. So for those that are actually after that SUV feel, it definitely ticks that box. So it's gonna be really popular with those kind of customers. The next massive difference in the literal and metaphorical sense is the boot space. It's huge. You also have hidden compartments underneath the main boot space and the frunk or fruit or whatever you want to call it is also bigger than Model 3 as well. So that's a bit more practical use of space because it is a bit limited in the Model 3, I have to say, although it's handy to keep all your cables and stuff in. But I challenge anyone with the amount of passengers you can fit in the car for them to bring the luggage that's going to fill the boot space in the Model Y. It is huge. The boot on the Model 3 isn't small, don't get me wrong, but it's because it's a saloon, the limited opening space can cause some issues like getting my Christmas tree in this year. It was only a five foot tree, but it was a struggle. The Model Y is a hatchback, so you've just got such a massive opening, you can fit whatever you want in there. It's a really, really massive selling point of the Model Y. The boot has no lip on it as well, so that makes loading and unloading a lot easier. And obviously the seats fold down to make even more space. Other really subtle changes are in the Model Y, you've got a single panoramic roof over the top and then slightly taller wing mirrors as just standard with the SUVs. Other than that, the specifications are pretty much identical to the Model 3. You've got double glazing throughout, you've got USB-C ports. It's all the same because as I said earlier, two thirds of it are all the same parts. So how did it drive? Well, currently in the UK, you can get specs on the Model Y of either long range or performance. So no two wheel drive option and no slow option. The Model Y that I was in was a Model Y long range on 19 inch wheels, which has got an advertised range of 351 miles. But if you go on the Tesla website, you'll see that it's advertised at 331. And that's because it defaults to the 20 inch wheels. So if you want the longer range, go for the slightly smaller wheels. I'm not gonna lie, it felt pretty much identical to driving my Model 3 in terms of performance. But let's be honest, I was driving around Birmingham in traffic. It's not the best test ground. The ride felt the same when I was going around corners and roundabouts. It wasn't floaty or bouncy like you sometimes get with SUVs. It managed poles exactly the same. The only difference, as I said, was sitting a little bit higher up in the traffic. I'm not a car tester, but I think if you put me in both vehicles with my eyes shut, I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference when you're riding around between the two vehicles. But that does make sense because two thirds of it are the same car at the end of the day. There was one stretch of road where I managed to accelerate really hard, use all the Tesla's potential to get up to the dizzy heights of 40 mile an hour, pretty limited in Birmingham, and it did perform pretty well. It's, you never get bored of electric car acceleration, it's amazing. The Tesla Model Y I was in had a 0-60 in 4.8 seconds, which is slightly quicker because of the four wheel drive than my Tesla Model 3, which is 5.1 I think at the moment, depending on software updates. So realistically, handling felt very similar, ride felt very similar. It was very similar to the Model 3, apart from that sitting higher up. And before I knew it, I was back at the Tesla Center, handed the key back to the guy. He asked me genuinely what I thought of it, not from a sales pitch perspective. He then asked if I had any questions, which I didn't, and I walked out. Now, if you do have questions or you're new to Tesla, there was loads of staff around that you could ask the questions to, which was really nice but they didn't kind of enforce that on you. Overall, really easy, pleasant experience with no hard sales pitch at any point, which is I really like because I hate people trying to sell me stuff. And it shows that Tesla have awesome faith in their product, which they should have because the product is amazing. So if you're remotely intrigued at what Tesla have to offer, but a bit scared of the sales pitch, don't worry, just put yourself on one because they don't try and sell you anything. Word of warning though, you'll probably want one when you come away, so just have that in the back of your mind. But really can't fault the process from how easy it was to book, to get a date, to arrive, check in, coffee, go out for a, a route round that they'd planned for me, and at no point did anyone try and really push anything on me, which is good. Uh, really good experience. Thumbs up for that Tesla. So the big question you're probably wondering is, am I going to get one? Well, that's going to be in my next video and the answer might actually surprise you. So if you want to see that, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've got any questions about the test drive experience I had, pop them in the comments below and I'll answer them for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.